Uh, Mr. Secretary, would you say you have a good relationship with Foreign Minister Zarif? Uh, right now, I don't have a relationship with the uh, Foreign Minister. Well, when you had one, when you were negotiating, was it good or was it bad? I would characterize it as professional. Okay, professional. You still got a security clearance? Do I? Yes. Yes, I do. You do. Okay. So you're a smart guy, Navy lieutenant, senator for many decades, secretary of state. You know that since 1979, Iran is responsible for killing more Americans than any other nation state, right? I suppose you know that. I've been, I've heard that. Yeah, I've yeah, of course. You went to Yale, so you're probably familiar with 50 U.S. Code 2204, 18 U.S. Code 2381. I suspect I'm not going to get into it. If you want me to, I will. But, Mr. Secretary, the foreign minister claimed that you had discussed more than 200 Israeli operations against Iranian-backed terrorists in Syria. Did you provide information to Mr. Zarif on Israeli operations against Iranian-backed terrorists during or following your tenure as Secretary of State? On no occasion. Never. Never. So Mr. Zarif is a liar. Mr. Zarif may be confused or incorrect, or he's trying to embellish his, his... What I read about that article said that he was portraying himself as out of the loop, and whatever, and quite emotional, apparently, is what I read. And I've seen him be quite emotional, and I can't vouch for why he did or what he said. I'm just telling you that didn't happen. End of story. That never happened. And that I know you're not under oath, but... We've seen many administration officials come to this Congress and lie straight-faced yeah. to members of Congress. You're saying, for the record, the that that time, never occurred. The first time I ever heard that this number 200 was when I read the article a few days ago. I've never heard of that. Well, that is heart heartening to hear, but I will tell you that there's reason for suspicion in this in this Congress and across America, and I just want to go through the record. In 1985, you as Senator traveled to Nicaragua against the administration's wishes to meet with Marxist leader Daniel Ortega. In 2006, you traveled to Syria to meet with the dictator Bashar al-Assad, contradicting President Bush's efforts to isolate Assad for su supporting Hezbollah. And I remind you that it's a, a sea of war and uh, uh, and her horrifying activities in Syria right now. I mean, if we could have done something with Assad then, maybe we wouldn't be dealing with what we're dealing with now. In 2018, you told the Palestinian Authority to hold on, the Palestinian Authority, to hold on and be strong and play for time and do not yield to the president's demands. And finally, following your term as secretary, we know that you met with Mr. Zarif. I know that you said you had a professional relationship. Apparently, it wasn't a good relationship, but it was professional enough that you met with him at least three times to discuss how to save the JCPOA, undermining President Trump's peace efforts. I remind you that as we speak, the Iranian proxy Hamas is raining down rockets across Israel right now. That's why people are right to be skeptical. That's why we ask this question. And so you say you're surprised and have no recollection of ever discussing these activities with Zarif regarding Israel in Syria. One more time, I, I Mr. Secretary. I didn't discuss, I didn't even know about uh, this number, as I said, until we, uh, until we read the article the other day. I'm but, not asking uh, about the number. No, I never had a discussion with him about Israel with respect to attacks or anything. No, I told you. That's the end of the story. And uh, that was the end of it. We didn't have any further involvement or engagement. He's a brutal him. dictator and a communist. You're damn Just, right. Yeah, that's You're exactly right. right. He's supporting America. The gentleman's time has expired. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Secretary Kerry, did you meet with Iranian Foreign Minister Zarif in Munich during the Munich Security Conference in February 2019? I, I don't know if I met with him in 20. I don't have a recollection of 2019. Uh, do you, maybe I you don't met, remember I the met year. With him. I know I met with him. I know I met with him in 2018, uh, and I met with him. Uh, I met with him. 
I think twice in 2018 and twice in 2017. Do you recall re uh, meeting him in Munich during the uh, Munich Security Conference? I recall meeting him. I just can't remember exactly which year or when it was. Were there other U.S. participants in that meeting? Well, I, did, I, I think it was not a meeting. I think I just were there other U.S. Pleasantries. Were there other Americans with you in that discussion? I don't recall. There were in one or two, but I don't recall which one. Uh, in the meetings that you did have U.S. participants, who were the U.S. participants? In Oslo, uh, I met with, uh, I think, I think John, a fellow named John Feiner might have been with me in Oslo. I don't know. In New York, I can't remember who was with me in New York. It was during the UNGAR, during the United Nations meeting. And, and the, the Oslo meeting was a public event, which I did with the high representative of, uh, of EU, the former high representative of EU. No, she was then still sitting high representative. And uh, it, was, uh, it was hosted by the Norwegian Peace Institute. Or Peace okay, well, I'm just asking if the, uh, which U.S. participants were in the meeting. Any other names? But that... I remember I had other people with me. I have to go back and figure out, I don't recall who was the traveling party. Did the discussion involve foreign affairs? Writ large, yeah. Did it involve U.S. foreign policy? Uh, I mean, not, I mean it, it involved sort of listening to views of what is happening in the world, where are we, where are we going, what do you think about this, what's, I mean, it's a general conversation, similar to one, by the way, that many members of Congress met with him uh, during that same period when I was in New York and had a meeting in New York. He met with Congress, he met with the New York Times editorial board, he was on TV. Yeah, it was I'm just, I'm a just public asking about dialogue. your meetings. Um, any other meetings with, how, how many meetings did you have with Zarif during the Trump administration? Uh, I think during the Trump administration, I had four meetings. Did you have any phone calls with Zarif during the Trump administration? No. no. Uh, would, would, would messages, communications be passed between the two of you no. separately? No, no the only parties? time we ever had any communication was about the specific meeting to get together to compare notes on what was happening in the world. Did you uh, have access, did you obtain any classified information during the Trump administration? No. Um, do you recall having a conversation with the House Intelligence Committee Chairman Adam Schiff at the Munich Security Conference? Do you recall having an extended conversation with uh, the House Intelligence Committee Chairman Adam Schiff at the Munich Security Conference? Uh, I think we had a I think we had a beer uh, in the rat skeller underneath the thing, but I don't recall specifically very much. No. Okay, there was a main room because I was there as well. There was a main room where there was a bunch of speakers, and I was I mean I, I was there. I watched. I mean, you guys had an extended conversation. You don't recall in, that conversation in the, in the main hall? Yes, it's entirely possible. I just I remember sitting with him having a beer. It was more fun. But but you don't recall having that conversation with uh, the chairman. Um, I don't recall the conversation. I, it's entirely, I think he, yeah, I think he sat beside me. We sat on the right side of the uh, hall looking towards the stage, and I think we sat there. And okay, well, I mean, I, I, you guys were standing, but um, when you guys met with Zarif, um, when you were talking about U.S. foreign policy, would you advocate uh, for your position on policy? Uh, the only time, I didn't advocate for my position. I, uh, when I met with him, during the period of time I met with Zarif, we were in the agreement. From the time the, uh, uh, President Trump pulled out of the agreement in May of 2018, and I don't recall having another conversation with Zarif yeah. after Well, that. we're running out of time. We have one president at a time, and uh, those conversations weren't helpful. I yield back. Well, one president. The gentleman's time, time has it. expired. Secretary Kerry, on April 25th, the New York Times published Iranian Foreign Minister Mohammad Javed Zarif's claim that you, as Secretary of State, revealed classified information regarding Israel's covert act, uh, act attacks on Iranian interests in Syria. These allegations 
are extremely disturbing. Iran poses an existential threat to Israel, a key U.S. ally, and it has repeatedly demonstrated its willingness to attack Israel directly, both through proxies and from its position in Syria. Given the gravity of the security threat Iran poses to the U.S. and allied interests, I believe the report should be investigated in full. If true, Javed Zarif's claims uh, raise serious questions regarding your ability, sir, to unreservedly protect U.S. interests as special presidential envoy for climate. The degree and the nature of U.S. participation in international climate change agreement must, and I underscore must, be informed by our national security interests. An overly narrow focus on left-wing action items like the deeply flawed Paris Agreement and the Iran nuclear deal cannot blind us to the malign intentions of adversaries like Iran, Russia, and the People's Republic of China. On April 28th, I sent a letter, this letter, to the Acting Inspector General of the Department of State and to the Secretary of State requesting an investigation into your relationship with Iran's Foreign Minister. Are you aware of this letter, sir? No, I'm not. I'll make sure you have a copy. Well, obviously I'm aware of it now. The letter also requested a response to several very specific questions by today, May 12th. As I have not received answers, and Mr. Chairman, I'd like this entered into the record. I'd like to ask you now, what were the circumstances surrounding your alleged leak of information to Javed Zarif, including the timing of this conversation? What role have you had in formulating U.S. policy on re-entering the Iran nuclear deal, sir? Well, I think your premise is incorrect. Uh, the story did not allege that I transferred classified information. It didn't even characterize it as classified. It simply said that on a tape, Javad was overheard in, in a long, long lamentation about how he was out of the loop in, in, uh, in uh, Iran and in the policy, and how he had learned this and learned that from somebody and then popped in saying... He said he learned it from you, sir, and that you told me there were 200 one, instances. He said he learned one thing from me, and I have already answered that question. I never said that. I don't know how he came up with that. don't know where it came from. And, and it was not... Uh, there was no, nothing stated in there about my having uh, released anything on classified information. And in 28 years in the United States Senate, and in six years on the Intel Committee, and as chair of the Foreign Relations Committee and as uh, Secretary of State in four years, never has anybody suggested I did not protect classified Well, I would like a full investigation and um, I would like my questions answered. I'll see if you have a copy. That concludes all of the questioning for today. Mr. Chairman, I have a point of parliamentary inquiry. Uh, this, this committee has a subpoena authority, so my question and my inquiry would be when we're bringing members from the administration, all of those members that I just named all got denied their ability to represent their districts and ask Mr. Kerry questions because he has to leave and do other things. So I, I don't understand why members of the administration don't feel like it's appropriate to schedule their time when they've requ you've requested them to come and come to this hearing and give opportunity to only... I don't know what the number is, but half of the members of this, comp of this committee to ask questions. So I would ask moving forward, is it the chair's intention to, one, when we bring members of the administration here, that they're gonna be here for ample time to not be denied the five minute rule under the rules of this, this committee and this Congress to have their ability to ask questions? Yeah. We knew that there was a hard stop at 1230. Was that One of the reasons why I was strict on the time was to get as many members to testify, to ask their questions as possible. Well, we weren't told, as a member of this committee, we weren't told ahead of time that he was leaving at 1230. Well, it happened, it just happened Congressman, prior I, administration. I will be happy to make an appointment with you, come up, sit down and chat with you. You can get more than five minutes. If you want to have a talk, I'm happy to do it.
Well, I, I think it's important to do it in front of the American people so that they get to hear your responses and, and, to the and, questions. And let me just made. come back. And, and I'm sure that the secretary will have ample opportunity to come back at that time, and maybe we'll start then from the bottom of the row and come up. I understand your frustration, particularly all of us used to be down at the bottom of the line uh, at one point. Uh, that is not taking place, uh, so that's the tradition that's happened here in the United States House of Representatives. To close, I know he's got to go. Go ahead. Well, uh, Secretary, thanks for being here. And just let me uh, say, I think, um, Chairman, you heard from my side and your side that China is going to be paramount in the success of your negotiations. And good luck catching your flight, sir. Let me thank the witnesses. I know he has to catch a commercial flight uh, headed over to Europe. Uh, and I want to thank all of the members of the Foreign Affairs Committee for their participation today. And with that, this hearing is now adjourned.